Uh, up next, we've got Alex uh, Chuang from uh, Shape Immersive. Uh, he's local here in Vancouver. He, he's going to talk about AR and the blockchain. He's doing some amazing projects, and he's down in the booth. I'll let him uh, say what he's doing and, and how he's doing that. But everyone, a big round of applause for Alex. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Awesome. So I'm super excited to share with you everything that I've learned about the AR cloud and how it's going to change everything. Ever since the beginning of the information age, we've been consuming digital information through a box. This is a box. That's a box. And these are all boxes. And we've been doing this for the last 68 years. For the very first time in the history of computing, augmented reality will allow us to interact with digital experiences that are no longer bounded by a box. This means that our experiences can be so much more natural, imaginative, and intuitive. Wouldn't it be incredible if we can travel back in time and learn the history of any place? Wouldn't it be stress-free if we can navigate any foreign city without the need of a map or a translator? And wouldn't it be life-changing if AR can help the blind see again? Well, if AR is so profound, why does it still struggle to break through the novelty phase? When was the last time somebody tapped on your shoulder and say, hey, you got to download this amazing AR application? Well. As a user experience designer, I'm very curious to understand why AR hasn't hit the mainstream yet. And through my research, I discovered this new concept called the AR cloud. And it's what's necessary for the mass adoption of AR. The AR cloud is a term coined by Ori Imbar, who's a partner at SuperVentures, which is an early stage AR fund. And Ori is one of the world's leading experts in AR. Both Ori and Matt from 60.ai described the AR cloud as a machine-readable, one-to-one scale model of the world. Some people call it a real-time spatial map of the world. Others think of it as the world's digital twin. Personally, I like to think of it as a parallel digital universe that perfectly overlays on top of our real world. Experts like Ori believe that the AR cloud is going to become the single most important software infrastructure in the history of computing. And it's going to be far bigger than Google's search index and Facebook's social graph. So why is the AR cloud so important for the mass adoption of AR? Well, since the dawn of time, humans have always shown a strong affinity to share and collaborate. We are inherently social creatures, and it's in our DNA to share and collaborate. That's why we built roads, the internet, and satellite networks, so we can communicate and share our experience with one another. And it is no different for augmented reality. We must be able to interact in real time, uh, interact with a virtual experience in real time with one another, or else it's going to feel like surfing the web without any friends. The AR cloud would enable everybody to have a shared experience. And to understand this, we must examine the three major components that Ori had laid out. The first one is a shareable and persistent point cloud. The second one is a ubiquitous and instantaneous localizer. And the third is the ability to support many users to interact with persistent content in real time on device and, or remotely. So let's take a look at the first component here, a shareable and persistent point cloud. In a coordinate system, a point cloud is essentially a set of data that is defined by its x, y, and z coordinates, and it's typically used to represent the external surface of an object. So for example, here you see the point cloud of the Colosseum. But in the context of the AR cloud, these point clouds would have to be geo-referenced meaning that they have to align to real-world coordinates. The second one 
is a ubiquitous and instantaneous localizer. Localizing simply means that the camera will have to understand its precise spatial coordinates relative to its environment. If the AR cloud were to exist today, the camera would be able to recognize the key features of a scene and be able to compare that with the data that's stored on the AR cloud in order to find a match. Once the match has been found, then the camera will be able to understand its position and orientation so you can actually enjoy the experience from any angle. And third, its ability to support many users to interact with persistent content in real time, on device, and remotely. And to demonstrate all of this, we created a multiplayer mixed reality experience called KittyCon. So first of all, we built a six foot tall physical replica of the Empire State Building, and we programmed a virtual cat to interact with it. Now the cat is spatially aware, so it understands the geometry of the building, uh, it can jump from ledge to ledge, uh, it can also uh, understand the position of the players, so it can throw little mini cat minions at the players. The players, on the other hand, are synchronized uh, in real time, so they can see what each other is doing. And this is possible because they're operating in the same frame of reference on a shared coordinate system. Uh, by capturing the geospatial data of uh, the environment, we can also achieve things like occlusion, which is hiding virtual objects behind physical objects, collision, which is colliding virtual objects against physical objects, and casting of virtual shadows uh, in the real world environment. All these little things make the experience so much more believable and immersive. So the users can really suspend their disbelief. So th think of uh, KittyCon as um, uh, a mini demonstration of what the AR cloud can do, right? Imagine if we have a digital replica of the entire world, then anything becomes possible. So let's do a quick review. The AR cloud is going to become the operating system for applications in the spatial era. Everything will run off of it. And to build the AR cloud, we must capture geospatial data from all around us and constantly update the world's soft copy as often as possible. And lastly, nobody owns the AR cloud today. There are many great AR cloud companies that have emerged from self mode in the last few months and they're looking for developers to try out their platforms. So if you're a developer, I highly recommend you to take a look at some of these companies and experiment with their SDK. My company, Shape Immersive, we're interested in building a decentralized marketplace for geospatial data, and we want to make these data universally accessible so anyone can create scalable and persistent AR experiences. But before we talk about decentralization, let's take a look at a, a traditional online marketplace. In a traditional online marketplace like Airbnb, the buyers and sellers are connected through an third independent third-party platform. This middleman typically verifies the identities of the buyers and sellers. They can also process the payments and transactions, and they can penalize account holders if they don't obey the rules. And this centralized approach made companies like Alibaba, Amazon, Uber, Airbnb, some of the most valuable companies in the 21st century. But centralized marketplaces are far from being perfect. Personal information and data can be hacked or stolen, like what happened with Equifax. The fees are typically fairly high, so Uber charges about 25% commission off the drivers. And users must comply with the terms that are dictated by the centralized organization. So in June this year, Google Maps API hiked up the price by 1,400%, and this really upset a lot of developers. And lastly, but most importantly, personal data and information can be sold to third parties. In the Facebook and Cambridge Analytica data scandal, over 87 million users and their data were compromised and used to sway political opinions. So needless to say, there are severe consequences when our data are not protected. 
Blockchain-based or decentralized marketplaces, on the other hand, are peer-to-peer -peer networks that directly connect the buyer and the seller without any intermediaries. Blockchain technology ensures the transparency and the validity of every transaction by recording each transaction on a distributed and public ledger system. Once recorded, the data is immutable. So it would be very, very difficult for an attacker to manipulate the data without anyone noticing. And in a decentralized system, the costs of validating these transactions are typically very low, about 0.0001 Bitcoin, which is equivalent to 63 cents. So how would a decentralized AR cloud marketplace look like? Well, the buyers in this marketplace are individuals or enterprises who rely upon crowdsourced geospatial data in order to build a digital product or service. And the sellers are individuals or enterprises who have the capabilities of capturing these com uh, protocol compliant geospatial data uh, by using either LiDAR scanners or depth sensing cameras or even their smartphones. And how this is gonna work is that uh, the buyers can make a request of the geospatial data they need. And once that standing order is listed on the marketplace, anyone in the network can fulfill that order and claim the incentive that's being offered here, which is a token that can be later on exchanged for fiat currency. In the near future, billions of people will have the devices that are capable of capturing these protocol compliant geospatial data. And this is paramount to building and maintaining a living and self-improving AR cloud. A trustless and permissionless protocol will ensure that individuals will have the ability to share their data selectively, control how their data is used by others, and have the means to meet demand in an open market. We believe the ideal AR cloud ecosystem should be open, transparent, and interoperable. And we believe blockchain technology has the potential to turn these ideas into a reality. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for having me, and look forward to meeting some of you. Thank you.